It is almost a year since war was declared, and Hornet is a very different squadron since we were pushed out of France. With the loss of almost all our Spitfires, and, sadly, some of the best pilots, we have regrouped on the south coast, less than 15 minutes flying from the Germans. When I look at our weary pilots, the new replacements seem like boys. But our Czech and Polish volunteers have brought some experience, and they are very keen on the war. Pilot officer Gordon is still in shock from losing his wife. Normally he'd be grounded, but these days we need every pilot, however mad they may seem. Still our losses are mounting, and his flight commander, Flip Moran, was lost in flames. Our intelligence officer has challenged the pilot's combat reports. I suppose that the new gun cameras will prove his point one way or the other. The Luftwaffe are putting more fighters and bombers up every day to hit London and we're engaged in combat almost constantly. We're taking a hammering, and frankly, I don't know how long we can carry on. Morning, Padre. Are they keeping you busy? I'm afraid so. I've got three at Kingsmere. It's getting a bit like a conveyor belt. The pilots are on standby, so there's no funeral party. I'm afraid you'll have to keep him here for a while. No transport, as you can imagine. Well, let's get cracking. You must be... I'm Mr. Burnett. Morris's uncle. Morris? Flight Lieutenant Moran. Oh, yes, of course, Morris. Half the time I forget my own name. Yes, yes, Morris, of course. He was such a lovely boy, Morris. I'd like you to know what a splendid contribution he made to the squadron. I'm sure he did. Brave and popular. There's a bit of a flap, and I'm sure Morris would understand that the fight goes on. That's probably the flight that your nephew commanded. Life goes on. I hope they'll be killing lots of Germans. Well, as you say, Mr. Burnett, Life goes on. Morris would always spend a couple of days with us in London when he was on leave, before he went on to visit his mother. Can we just see a last glimpse of him before the service? Yes, it'd be a great comfort to his mother. I'm afraid it's too late for that now. I am sorry. Just a couple of minutes. Well, you see, it's just been sealed. They've screwed the lid on? Yes, they have. There'd be no disrespect if we went... No, I'm afraid it's not on. Is it something to do with regulations? Well, it's not that, but... Could I have a word with you? The thing is, Mr. Burnett, we can open the coffin, but I'm afraid your wife will be very upset. What's wrong with him, then? There's nothing there. Flight Lieutenant Moran was shot down in flames. We thought to be a bullet or something. Well, it wasn't. He was burnt to death. I'd still like to see... Don't you understand what I'm saying? There's nothing. Ashes, a few cinders, there's nothing that you would recognize. I don't think his mother would want to know about that. Well, thank you, sir. I think you're right. His mother wouldn't want to hear. I think it should be shut away. Just as well you told me. 
I suppose you're accustomed to this kind of thing, sir? No, not really. We're just civilians. We don't understand these things. Well, let's get on with the job, eh? Thank you. Ankles and 109s. On your toes, chaps. You got my laundry? That can wait. Enter. You're for it. What have I done? Oh, Moggy. Didn't you know the town of Sashton was ahead of you? Know it well. Not Winchester Avenue, I hope. But what happens there? There's where your aircraft landed. Really? I was hoping for an orphanage or an old people's home. Almost, Moggy. Two houses, killing four people, including an infant. A disaster. For whom? I'm still here. I jumped out at about a thousand feet. Lower than that and I'd be in trouble. It didn't occur to you to sit tight and try to miss the houses? No. Oh. I think you're trying to say something. Anyone with an ounce of gallantry would have stayed at the controls and tried to miss the innocent civilians. Is that what you're saying? Something like that. Obviously, I'm not a pilot. No, you're not. And I haven't got an ounce of gallantry. And I don't intend to get myself killed to save three and a half oiks. It's their war as well, you know. They're always saying this is a people's war. Well, now they know what it's like. That's a rather callous attitude. Is it? Why give civilians a special status? Because they're non-combatants. They used to say women and children first. Did they? But they can't fly Spitfires, can they? Incidentally, did you get my Hankel in a 109? Well done. Still, Stebbing told me and they're confirmed. You know about Fitzgerald? 
Uh, Commodore Bletchley is waiting to see you. I told you the fellow's suffering from shock. Semi-paralyzed. I trust you were wounded? Not me, sir. Yes, you were, Moggy. The Air Commodore knows more about bailing out than you do. That's right, Catamount. You were wounded. Your controls were shot up and you were semi-paralyzed. RAF pilots do not bail out in built-up areas, and if they do, they don't talk about it in pubs or in letters home. We're going to have calls from counselors, the clergy, ratepayers, and probably the News Chronicle. Just tell your chaps to forget it ever happened. Yes, sir. That includes you, Catamore. Shock does funny things to a man. I wouldn't be surprised if you'd forgotten all about it by tomorrow. All about what, sir? That's the idea. The exercise is biffing the Bosch, not clouting civilians. Incidentally, did you hear yesterday's call? Jerry lost 49 to our 16. Now, that's the kind of news I want to hear. I suppose this couldn't have come at a worse time for you. Well, he's only missing. Well, that's true, but... I'm afraid that all the indications are that he's gone for good, Mary. Well, I don't mean for good. It's an awful... How can you say that? You haven't even found him. Well, that's true. <laughs> There's hope, isn't there? I mean, I mean, he, he always turns up. You know what Fitz is like. What about the time when... When he pranged his kite. Well, was it someone near Canterbury? Miracles sometimes happen. Of course they do. And when he bailed out a couple of weeks ago. Oh. So, Celia, I was going to make you some tea, but I haven't got any. Fitz was going to scrounge some from the cookhouse. Sure, I've got some oval tea. No, really. Mary. Mary, come on. I really don't want any oval tea. And apart from anything else, he's so careful these days. Not at all like the old fits. It's because of parenthood, I suppose. When I first met him, he was so merry and bright. Just being a fighter pilot was like being in the first 15. But now he's much more responsible. Yes, I know, Mary. I suppose I should be crying. But I can't. I mean, he'll turn up. He always has. Well, perhaps. As long as he's missing, he could turn up at any moment. I bet you he does. Mary, I think you have to accept. I bet you. I know my thing. Brooke, get the lights. Right, quiet down, please. Gentlemen, gentlemen, you may be amused when you see this little film. And by the end, you may be rolling in the aisles. I'm not going to identify each of you, but no doubt you'll recognize your own combat reports. These clips of film are quite short, and I trust they will be illuminating. Lights, please, Flash. Yes, sir. 
And this particular pilot reported that he closed to a range of 200 yards and fired a two-second burst which hit a hankle in the starboard wing. Could we hold it there, Benson? Knowing the Heinkel's wingspan, we can calculate the exact range. The range was 480 yards. None of the shots hit the bomber. But you can see the smoke coming out the back of the engine. A blow-up of the film establishes beyond doubt that the Spitfire fired well below the target. The damage was from another Spitfire, which made a simultaneous attack from high on the port beam. That'd be me. You can just see the aircraft in the corner of the picture. Thank you. The next film was taken by that particular Spitfire. And the report says, my second attack was from high on the port beam. I put in a two second burst at about 150 yards and saw smoke pour out of the starboard engine. Could we run it, please? A good shot. Thank you, Mike. That's probably me as well, yes. <laughs> the report was correct, as you saw. And this next film shows a rather confused piece of action that took place during a large dogfight. The pilot reported that he fired at three ME-109s in quick succession, missing the first two and destroying the third. Quiet. We'll have to run that again. In fact, the first alleged 109 is a Spitfire. And the second alleged 109 is also a Spitfire. I think you have the idea there, gentlemen. Do I turn the lights on, sir? Please. Well, plenty of violence, but no sex. Any chance for Mickey Mouse next? We don't need any more laughs, Moggy. Yellow section scramble, Foxton area, Angels 1-3. Fifteen minutes standby, sir. Thank you. All right. We'll discuss this later on. That's all. Thank you, Benson. Uncle, Chris, wait, please. Let's go. Are you as depressed as me? Are we that bad? Well, I have said that our claims are wildly exaggerated. We're no worse than any other squadron. Did you see that film? I reckon we've got about three good pilots, two or three not bad, and the rest, they couldn't hit the floor if they fell out of bed. If anybody's interested, we just lost the best shot in the squadron. Hey, I'm talking to you new boys. A couple of hints for you, okay? The important thing is you've got to keep looking behind you. You watch your tail. Otherwise, Tiddlywinks, the nasty big bogeyman will shove a cannon shell up your bum. Go play in the sandpit, Flash. You always watch the sun. Nine times out of ten, Jerry's up there, so you never climb away from the sun. And it's never, fatal. never, never dive into 400 Messerschmitts, particularly if you're out of ammo. Just ignore him, he's nuts. Not true. I'm the only sane man in the squadron. The ammo tested me, didn't test anybody else. Shut up, Flash. As now, a veteran find... of combat, can I tell you something? Getting up and down's okay. It's the bit in between that's tricky. Go see your doctor again, Flash. Shan't. Somebody turn off the gramophone. That's my favorite song. Chris, I want to talk to you.
trying too hard, Chris. Every time you talk to the new boys, it becomes a lecture. They gotta learn. They haven't got time. And you're intimidating them. I'm responsible for half of them. And I'm responsible for the whole bloody squadron. You're getting twitchy. Me? Did you see All that? Right. Take a day off. How are you gonna run your war without me? We'll get by. Talk about twitchy. Not me, mate. So everybody's wrong except you, huh? No, no, not everybody. It's just you. You seem to think you can solve everything by planning and holding briefings and bloody lectures. Work it all out scientifically so that nothing's left to chance. Typical yank attitude. You'd like to organize this war, wouldn't you? Do it by the book. Well, the problem is, mate, the enemy doesn't read the same book. In the immortal words of our late Polish colleague, he's cock up. Every war's a cock up, and I don't need you to keep telling me that. Take a day off. Who's gonna lead a flight? Flash. He's nuts. Does that matter? I like Flash. He doesn't think too much. He just gets into him. And he never, never complains. His brains are in his guts. You're grounded for 24 hours. That's all. You're the boss. Flash? Me? Is there anybody else called Flash? That's a coming, Buena. Afternoon, Morgan. Not a spy. Oh, dear. It's been there since half past eight. Poor girl. What about the poor chaps? If she goes on like this, they'll get upset. She probably didn't think about that. She doesn't even move. Why can't people bury their dead and get on with life? Slip of a girl. What? She was a widow when she married Fitz. <laughs> You're not suggesting she's a professional widow. At least she's got some experience, isn't she? I mean, if ladies marry fighter pilots, they know the chances, surely. This is Popcorn Red Leader. Our angels are ten. That's just to confuse the enemy. Doesn't matter, they've seen us and we've seen them. Straight ahead and there's dozens of the bastards. It's a head-on attack. Does everyone read me? Red two to Red Leader, head-on attack. It's what I call a suicide run. My God, but they scatter. OK, when I say bingo, everybody bloody well fires, all right? Bingo! <laughs> My God, I got a double top. <laughs> Taxpayers' money, you know. 
What's wrong with you? Just a sec. Oh. Oh, I knew something was wrong with me. I'm going. I'm going. Glass you got there. Uh, uh, oh, that's. What is that, D? Good man. Good man. I'll second that. I cry like baby. I wish to Christ I could do that. Half a bitter, please. I'm Spencer. I'm new. Well, I'll have a pint of bitter and a tincture of Scottish wine as well. Oh? It's traditional. Really? You know, you remind me of an old friend. Well, he wasn't really a friend. Pip, don't you think he looks like Dickie Star? Or Flying Officer Stickwell? I see what you mean. There's a certain resemblance. Oh, dead ringer. For both of them. Well, I don't know about ringer, but they're certainly dead. Mind you, you can't keep up with the names these days. We're very proud of our casualty list. Probably the best record in fighter command. Done a lot of combat, Spencer. Not really. None. None? <laughs> Did you know Fitzgerald? No. Pity. Too late now. Or the flying pole. Flip Moran? Mother Cox? Old Miller? Well, that other chap. Well, McFarlane. Renouf. You're having me on. In fact, the chap you're replacing owes me a fiver. What are you going to do about that? Don't believe a word of it, Spencer. Can you just turn that radio off for a second? Right. Everybody awake? I've got some good news for you. The whole thing's a mistake. Please, Moggy. The Prime Minister. Mr. Winston Churchill himself just made a speech about you. Yes, you chaps. In the House of Commons, he said, undaunted by odds, unwearied in their constant like challenge... He doesn't talk like that. No, he's much more, um... Let me see that. <coughs> yeah, undaunted by odds, yeah, unwearied in their constant challenge, and more than... Don't be so bloody stupid. You're a bloody maniac! Don't you want to hear this? 
Apparently you're heroes. Well, the Prime Minister believes that you're turning the tide of world war by their... That's your prowess and devotion. And in conclusion, he said, never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. That's what he said. What does he mean, owed by so many? He probably heard about the mess bill. I don't know about you chaps, but that was a very touching and inspiring tribute. Does that mean we can go home now? Come on, don't take all bloody day. Sorry. <coughs> don't upset him, Pip throws tea. That was years ago. You're pretty good at flying under bridges, apparently. Who told you that? One of the fittest. A lot of hooey. I've got more sense than do that. He's your bridge ace. In that case, you owe me a thousand francs. That was donkeys years ago. We don't have to do stupid things like that anymore, do we? Why not? Silly man. Did you hear it? No, I didn't hear a thing. Must have been the whiskey. Anybody killed? Don't think so, sir. They've got a spitfire. Mm. The CO is in with Flying Officer Stilton. End of the corridor, sir. Oh, thanks. What sort of whiskey was it, sir? Christ knows. I'm going to take some more tonight. Good day. Morning. Well, you think Rex would approve? <laughs> About ten minutes would be full of Sheridan furniture and Persian rugs. <laughs> and at least three sporting prints. Oh, that seems like ten years ago. I can't even remember the taste of champagne. Forget it. Just want to sleep for a week. Morning. Morning. The new replacement pilots will be arriving in about 20 minutes. You bloody names. And we've only got five Spitfires left. Mm. Ashton. Ashton. I can't even fix a name to a face. It's from Blackpool, wasn't it? Well, he won't see Blackpool again. Christ, no. Not Flash. I'm afraid so. Bit of spit on a blackboard and that's the end of it. When did he die? A couple of hours ago. The medics told me what it was, but I wasn't really listening. Uh, yeah, Post-operational shock, I think they said. Three or four bullets. One of them went right through his shoulder and came out of his bum. He would have liked that. He knew an awful lot about anatomy. It was a card, wasn't it, young Flash? I really thought he'd get away with it. They say God takes care of drunks and loonies. Well, he's been working overtime these days. That's for sure. I was starting to think old Flash was bulletproof, too. I don't know. I hope to Christ this war is going to be worth it. You'll want to see the new pilots when they come. I'll be in my office. All right, thank you. Carry on, then, Nicholas. They're late. Probably read old Winnie's speeches in the newspapers. Well, we're certainly ahead on points. 
How the hell do you know, Amanda? Well, it's quite obvious. It's in the papers. I haven't seen my copy of Hotspur this week, but my bookmaker's still quoting five to four on for an invasion. Well, where would they land? Eastbourne? Steady on, Amanda. I have several maiden aunts living in Eastbourne. I heard they go for rye. Good golf course. What's wrong with Hastings? William the Conqueror knew what he was doing. Well, it's obvious. Right. Boom. They land at Hastings. Shoot straight up the A21, and by nightfall, they've got Tunbridge Wells. Fan out left, and they've got East Grinstead. A quick march, and they've got Lingfield. Caterham. We've got an army, you know. Who says? Oh, dear, Moggy. You may be right. We lost half the army in France. How many tanks have we got? A hundred? Two hundred? And they've got thousands of them. Hmm. This is exciting, isn't it? Where are we? All right. Yeah. The Panzer Corps makes a quick dash at, uh, well, Camberwell and Bermondsey, and everybody's off to Hampshire for the weekend. So Jerry's nicely tucked up in the Savoy by midnight. And then next day, they're swanning around Sloan Square and grabbing the tarts in Shepherd's Market. Harrods wouldn't serve them. Sobering thought, Moggy. You may be right. The Huns win? Well, why not? They're on a winning streak. Well, they've already walked into Denmark, Norway, Holland, Belgium, France. Poland and Czechoslovakia. Well, there you go. The Krauts ruling England. Yes. What would they do? Well, for a start, they'd put you in one with scrubs. I'd certainly get my vote on that. Amanda. Have you ever voted? Is that a mythic? None of you have ever voted. You're the last bastion of democracy, and you chaps have never voted. And if Hitler wins, you never will. Well, politicians are all the same. Not true. Oh, what's the difference in Czechoslovakia now than it was before? Everything, you fool. Newspapers. I only read the sporting life. They control the radio. Can't be worse than the BBC. Wipe out the trade unions. Bloody good luck. They arrest the Jews. Should I cry? They ban the liberals. Shocking lot. Socialists, communists. That shower, bloody reds. They're as squalid as the Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> I am good communist. I fight for my country. You say communists are same as Nazis. I kill you. Addy, old chap, calm down. He didn't mean it. He bloody well did. He was just being provocative. Then he succeeded. Addy, calm down. Come on, take a walk. I mean, we're all friends. Not me! Fine. <sighs> Great. You can't trust them. Bloody foreigners. They ought to be put down at birth. Oh, why can't they have their own war? Bit of a laugh, though, eh? She's back. The Black Widow. Bloody creepy. Oh, Christ. Wonderful to see you. What the bloody hell are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Say hello to the baby. I don't want to talk to your bloody baby. What are you trying to do? Do you think Fitz is coming back? He's only missing, you know. Don't be so bloody stupid. He's dead. Got it? Kaput. Finito. He ain't coming back. I'm going to wait. I know you're worried about We just me. want you to go. You're a jinx. You're a menace. Just go. They also serve who only stand and wait. Stand somewhere else, you stupid bitch. Now get in the car. No, no, no my baby. Just go away, Mary. Knit socks or mittens or join the Women's Institute. And don't come back, Mary. You're spoiling everybody's war.
this is it. It's everything we've got. There's going to be 20 squadrons in the air. I don't believe it. Just for once, we're going to outnumber them. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Skull? Harry? Pip? And where's Moggy? He's got to see the Black Widow. Right, Spencer, let's go! You got a license, old boy. This happens to be my guy. But the CEO told me to check Sorry, this Sorry, old thing. chap. I'll need these as well. You know, you can keep the rest.
and smoggy. All right, sir. All right. I'm okay. You? Tired? Refuel and rearm right away. Yes, sir. Anything for me? Bags of stuff. We probably got six kills. Paddy and, and Chris Hart bought it. And Moggy. Christ. If anybody really wants to know, the group says it's our best day ever. Scrap a pattern, and I missed it. There's always tomorrow. Or even today, old chap. And you're lucky. I hope so. Pretty hairy, eh, sir? Piece of cake. On this day, the 7th of September, 1940, the Luftwaffe had launched its biggest ever raid against Britain with nearly 1,000 German aircraft attacking London. The pilots of the Luftwaffe had been told that the Royal Air Force were at breaking point. But fighter command did not break, and this day was the turning point of the Battle of Britain.